What's going on everybody? Dave here, the Reef Aquarium Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, it is Tuesday. That is the day we go live. Now, the shop is actually closed today because here in Indiana, I don't know where you are right now, uh, most of our audience tends to be in Indiana right now, but uh, if you are in Indiana, you know what I'm talking about. We are covered in snow. Um, not quite as bad as uh, some of our friends up north, but it is, uh, it is quite a mess outside right now. Um, so, uh, I actually spent a, uh, a good hour and a half at two separate locations, uh, mind you, just shoveling a ton of snow this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but, uh, but yeah, I did a lot of shoveling. Uh, but, uh, I got here to the office. Once I got on the main roads, it wasn't too bad, uh, especially like 465. That was, that was great. Uh, everything else, uh, was kind of trash, uh, <laughs> uh, in the neighborhood roads especially. But, hey, uh, I am here. I've been hanging out, answering your questions on social media. Uh, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, here on YouTube, and uh, now on TikTok, uh, and you guys can find us uh, at The Reef Indie on any of those platforms. So I've been here doing that, and uh, if you saw our Instagram post this morning, you know we are working on upgrading The Reef Indie Studios. Um, I have been kind of using this set in the very beginning. Uh, I, I'm back to Streamlabs today, uh, working on that. I kind of like this setup. Uh, let me know if you agree. I think it's pretty sleek. Um, but uh, we're back in Streamlabs, um, and I have been uh, in the past, well, and currently using this as my backdrop. Um, and it's uh, while I do have my Beta Sorority micro pond behind me, um, it's not very fishy. <laughs> so uh, we want to change that, and uh, we are building a whole set um, right next uh, door to me, um, adjacent to my office here. Um, we are building a set and it's going to be so, so cool. Uh, you can see the beginning of that on our Instagram page and uh, go check that out. That was the latest post today. Uh, and I think, yeah, I posted up on uh, Twitter as well talking about that. Um, so, uh, again, welcome, welcome. If you are new, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and start putting your questions in the comments. I treat every Tuesday as an open Q&A. Uh, as you'll see in the titles, we always have uh, some sort of topic or some sort of activity that we are doing um, or even uh, an interview um, on our Tuesday live streams here on YouTube. Um, but no matter what we are doing, we will always treat these as an open Q&A. So if you have any questions about the aquarium hobby, um, the Reef Aquarium Shop, uh, or you know just what we're talking about in general, which today is going to be algae eaters, uh, and if you really need them or not. Um, it could be about any of those things. So go ahead and uh, drop those questions in the comments, and I will check those out. Uh, periodically uh, throughout our live stream today uh, as we are talking about algae eaters. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, say what's up to you guys. I see a few of you in the comments now. Chase saying, hey, Bob Moss, if you missed our stream last week, uh, it is posted on the main page. Go check it out to see what Chase is talking about. Um, Chase says, based on the topic, uh, of course you need algae eaters. They look cool. They do. There's a ton of cool algae eaters out there. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, Hansel says, yep, couldn't leave the neighborhood because the streets are covered in a snowy wonderland. Absolutely they are. Uh, like I said a minute ago, I had to do uh, quite a bit of digging to get myself uh, out onto the main road today. Uh, so, yeah, you know, hey, again, we're here. Uh, and I am glad that you are safe and warm at home. I hope you all are uh, in the same condition, safe and warm as I am. 
Um, Elizabeth, what's going on? Uh, about the topic says, perfect. I'm trying to explain to my office mate that algae happens. Algae does happen. Algae happens. That needs to be a, that needs to be a t-shirt or something. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it right now. Well, not right now, but... Uh, yeah, algae happens should just be uh, just a motto of any aquarium keeper's life. <laughs> uh, Hansel talking about keep uh, still talking about algae. I want to grow algae actually for my algae eaters. Absolutely, uh, and that's definitely something we'll be uh, talking about as we get into our algae eater discussion. Um, Lewis says, I have, uh, a white film on my Mopani wood. What's the issue with that and how could I solve it? Thanks so much. Yeah, great question. Um, that white film, uh, and this is going to happen on not just Mopani wood, uh, but pretty much any wood you get. Um, Mopani and, uh, like spider wood are, uh, in my opinion, the most notorious for it, um, or in my personal experience, but... It, uh, it's, it's not a problem. It's just going to happen for a little bit. Uh, it's not hurting anything. It's just a thin layer of biofilm that your, um, that your wood is producing. Um, and just like tannins, eventually it's going to stop doing that. So all you really have to do um, is brush it off. Um, it'll run through your filter. Uh, there's a few things, uh, a few fish or uh, organisms that are going to actually help eat that um, and, and pick at it if you wanted to grab something that's going to help keep it off of the driftwood. Um, we'll be talking about a few of those things uh, coming up. Um, but one of my favorites uh, to, to get that off of the wood are uh, nearite snails. Uh, they're great at that. Autosynclus are really good at that. Uh, but again, we're going to start talking about those here in just a little bit. Um, let's see here. Elizabeth says, uh, talking about her uh, workmate, talking about algae. Uh, my mistake, I gave her light colored decor and now it's brown. You know, that happens, and that's a good, uh, that's a good point, and, uh, something I am, uh, going to make a note to talk about, um, light deco and substrate, thank you, Elizabeth, uh, I will definitely touch on that and why that can actually be a factor, uh, here in just a moment, and uh, just, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Again, if you are just joining us, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Uh, I'm Dave. We're here at the Reef Aquarium Shop in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is an open Q&A uh, for uh, the aquarium keeping hobby, so if you have uh, questions about aquarium keeping, the Reef Aquarium Shop, or algae eaters in general as we're talking about them, go ahead and drop those comments uh, or questions in the comments, uh, and I'll get to those when I I see them. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking about algae. Um, and, and again, I will get to your uh, questions uh, and, and come around to them. But uh, let's start talking about algae. Um, so uh, the topic at hand is algae eaters. Um, and my title is, Do You Even Need Them? Um, and honestly, the, just to put it simply, no, you don't. Um, so algae uh, has a source. Uh, so people will come into the shop all the time and be like, hey, I, uh, I need to grab this algae eater. And usually before I say, yes, right away, let me grab that for you, which I typically do regardless anyways. Uh, <laughs> but before I get into all that, I will say, okay, well, why are you getting so much algae? Um, the important part is to find out why you're getting algae, where it's coming from. Um, and there could be a lot of different factors, uh, but the two biggest factors in generating algae in your tank are going to be A, um, the waste levels in your tank because the algae is just going to feed on waste. So if you're overstocked or if you haven't been doing your water changes like you should be doing, um, you're going to build up some uh, organics and the algae is just going to super feed off of that. Um, and the second biggest thing is going to be your lighting. Uh, lighting is, uh, honestly, this should have been the first one. Lighting is probably the number one reason people get algae blooms in their tank. You, you're leaving it on for too long. <laughs> um, and uh, the ideal uh, uh, time span for leaving your lights on on your aquarium is about six to eight hours. Um, and I typically, uh, and, and that's typically for like a, a planted tank that uh, actually needs that light. Um, 
If you want to run your aquarium lights for less than that on a tank that does not have live plants or has some really hardy live plants such as Anubius or you know things in that nature, um, you can definitely be running it less and you're going to accumulate a lot less algae. Um, and speaking of uh, lighting, uh, again, six to eight hours is kind of your uh, kind of your sweet spot. I actually will pop it on a timer. Timers are your best friend as far as lighting is concerned and uh, getting the proper amount of lighting on your tank and not overdoing it. Pop that on a timer and you're never going to have to worry about it. Um, that way, you know... It, Usually people are, uh, they'll, they'll turn their, uh, their tank on, uh, the tank light, like when they leave for work or something like that in the morning. Um, and then they come home in the evening, the tank light is still on, it's probably been on for about eight hours at that point already, but now you just got home, you're sitting down, relaxing, chilling, having dinner, watching TV, hanging out with your kids, whatever you're doing in your free time at home. Um you kind of want the tank on and, and running for that so you can you can check it out so um the but you know you get home let's say it is like mm, six o'clock when you get home um and you go to bed at like 10. Uh, if it's already been on, that's still a, uh, a a large chunk of time to add on to that eight hours you've already been running it-ish. Um, but also, if that's all you're running it, if you're doing live plants, that may be too little. Now, if you just want to pop it on when you get home from work and leave it on for like three, four hours and then flip it off when you go to bed, that's great. Your fish actually, while they do need that whole uh, the day-night cycle to uh, be healthy... Um, they uh, they don't need a, a ton of light. So you can, uh, through uh, the ambient light in your house and only having the light on for a few hours a day, um, you can cut algae real fast, um, knocking it down like that. Again, if you have live plants, they're going to need the lighting. You're going to want to ride six to eight hours a day. But if you have that timer, a little uh, trick that I've used is to uh, turn that light off for about 30 minutes in the middle of the cycle. So if you're running at six, um, yes, see nasty, we are still closed today. Um, I will uh, attempt to get some confirmation. Um, in fact, um, I will, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, let me find out uh, what the plan is for tomorrow. Um, anyway, turn that light off for uh, for about 30 minutes in the middle of the cycle. If you're running it for six hours, run it three, turn it off 30 minutes, uh, run it three more, eight hours, four and four, you get the picture. Uh, but shut that off. Believe it or not, algae is actually kind of a weak plant um, and needs that long light cycle to survive. Um, and this is this, this varies between the strains of algae too, but this is a good rule of thumb in general. Um, so by cutting off that light cycle, your other plants are fine with that. That's just a cloudy portion in the day for them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the algae does not like that at all in your actual plants. We'll be able to outcompete them for the nutrients at that point. Um, and, and yeah, um, speaking of nutrients, let's talk about different types of algae. And I know I haven't even gotten into the algae eaters yet. Uh, but again, uh, this whole, the, this whole conversation started with why do you need an algae eater? Hmm? Mm -hmm. So if we figure out the uh, source of our algae and we can cut that down, um, algae eaters uh, are not not really a necessity. And I don't think they're a necessity in the first place uh, just because you, you have algae scrapers. <laughs> um, and yes, that's more work to you. But uh, by putting an algae eater in the tank, they're eating algae and producing what? Waste which feeds more algae. Um, so uh, it can, uh, especially if you're tossing a pleco in there, and, and we're going to talk about that here uh, in just a moment as well. Um, but um, definitely look out for uh, your different types of algae as well. What I just mentioned and talked about are good general rules of thumb. Um, but if we're talking about cyanoalgae, that's that slimy brown, green, sometimes bluish uh, algae uh, that you can get kind of carpeting um, your substrate or your deco, things of that nature. That is more bacterial based. And I actually have a whole video um, kind of breaking that down um, and telling you what it is, 
Um, why we get it, <laughs> I say this because we actually don't know, uh, for the most part. Um, I, I explain it in a lot better detail, uh, but for cyano, uh, that's a bacterial-based algae, and you want to uh, approach it a little differently than other algae. Uh, for hair algae, uh, one of the main uh, sources of, um, of food for hair algae is phosphates, so you can look into if phosphates are coming into your tank somehow. There's a lot of uh, different... Um, different levels in your tank that we're not necessarily monitoring um, that could cause spikes in algae for sure. Um, so, uh, like I said, there are definitely going to be specific uh, variations in the types of algae, um, but in general, lighting, keeping your tank nice and clean, um, those are going to be the two main things to look out for. Um, now, uh, you've got that kind of covered, uh, you're running your lights six to eight hours a day, uh, and you're still going to get an accumulation of uh, algae. As um, Elizabeth said earlier, algae happens. <laughs> uh, it just does. Uh, and that's a good thing. Algae is not really uh, necessarily a bad thing to have in your tank. It's a living organism that you are sustaining, right? Um, so uh, that's, a, that's a good sign in some respects, right? Um, but if you're still trying to get rid of uh, some algaes here and there, um, it, there are definitely plenty of algae eaters that you can do, uh, and plenty that are great out there. Um, but in my personal opinion, uh, algae eaters in general are not a necessity. You don't have to have them. Uh, it's not something you just need to put in your tank uh, because everyone has it in their tank. Uh, you, ab absolutely. You can keep your tank uh, clean and uh, uh low algaed, <laughs> not algae free, um, and you don't necessarily want that, um, but, uh, but yeah, you can keep your, you can keep your algaes, uh, very much under control without them, for sure. Um, so now that I've talked about, uh, why you don't really need them, let's talk about some cool algae eaters, um, or I do want to talk about some cool algae eaters, but before I get into that, I'm gonna jump into the comments here, <coughs> excuse me, um, Let's see here. Uh, Nicole asks, Hey Dave, suggestions on moving Hydra and Planaria in a RCS and Beta aquarium of mine. Uh, ordered no Planaria last night and growing impatient until it arrives. Honestly, uh, it, going uh, direct chemicals like that is about the best way to do it. Um, do you have a single beta in there or a sorority? Because there's, uh, there's going to be several fish that are going to eat that. Um, like, uh, a lot of loaches would probably go after those. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in my personal experience, if you're trying to, uh, just wipe them out, um, something, uh, something chemical like that might be a little more direct. I never really mind them that much, but I've not, I've not personally had them get to a point where it was just too much for me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would honestly just uh, be patient until that no planaria arrives. Um, ch -ch 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 Mark asking, what algae eater is good for green spot algae on the glass? Um, so there's a, there's a couple different forms of that, and the most common form is going to be that cyano that we talked about. Um, and there are several um, organisms that are great at cyanoalgae. So let's go ahead, uh, and since Mark, you're uh, <laughs> pulling us in there, let's, uh, let's talk about cyano and a couple of the, um, a couple of the organisms uh, and algae eaters that uh, I would recommend. Uh, for that. And the number one uh, thing that I would recommend for cyanoalgae is more flow. <laughs> um, and uh, especially if it's, uh, you're saying that it's on your glass, I understand, but especially if it's on your substrate, uh, pop some more flow on that and it's not going to accumulate in that area. But as far as organisms that eat it, nearite snails are fantastic at it. Um, the one downside nearite snails, ah, there's a 
there's two downsides to nearite snails, but I honestly don't mind them that much. Uh, so the first downside is that they will lay these white eggs kind of all over your driftwood and <laughs> plants. Um, uh, and I don't really find that that annoying. Uh, they're not going to hatch because they're originally a saltwater snail uh, converted to fresh. Um, so that is a uh, pro in that respect is they're not going to breed like crazy and overpopulate your tank like some other snails can. Uh, but nearites are really good good at eating cyano. Um, another thing that's really good at eating cyano, um, if you can uh, have a good oxygenation, which uh, translates into a nice, uh, a relatively high flow, um, but uh, the hillstream loaches are actually pretty good at eating algae. Um, and they can, uh, they can hit up the glass, they can hit up the deco and rocks, plants, smooth surfaces. Um, those are a couple great ones uh, for cyano in particular. Um, now, if it's, uh, if it's a hard algae, like, like uh, really like hard and calcified and you gotta like work it to like chip it off, there's not much that's actually going to eat that, unfortunately. Um, that is just a, a job for a uh, scraper or a razor blade. Um, and I'm typically, I can get them off uh, pretty easy if it's the hard stuff um, with that, um, with the, uh, the Seachem one. I just, I really like the handles uh, on the Seachem scrapers. Um, it's just got a good grip and I can slide right over that stuff. Um, but thank you, Mark, for that question. Um, let's see here. Uh, C Nasty was asking if we are closed today still, and I, I hit up this uh, hit this up earlier. But uh, yes, uh, because of the weather, we were actually closed for the day, um, and I am uh, waiting on response back. Um, from anyone. Brandon, can you hear me? Let's just ask the boss man. All right, Kevin should be able to tell us <laughs> whether or not we're open tomorrow. I assume um, that we are going to be open tomorrow, but I, I don't want to tell you that for sure until I have confirmation uh, from the from the people who can actually say so, <laughs> um, but uh, but yes, let's see here. <sighs> Nicole says my favorite algae eater is a good old toothbrush. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, the right tools and the right uh, routine uh, for your cleaning and your lights is uh, is one of the best algae algae preventatives out there. Um, absolutely, uh, and and just yeah, cleaning up, you, doing some old elbow grease. Um, see, Nasty says, I just had to get a Fluval Aquasky 35 watt. You think that's a good planted aquarium light? Um, yeah, no, it's not bad. Um, now, obviously, uh, if you've got the Aquasky, then you probably know that Fluval has a, uh, a plant model out there, um, which indeed is better. Um, and uh, the, the spectrum is a little more controllable. Um, you've got more lighting on the plant. Um, but that does not mean the Aqua Sky is not going to grow some plants. I have done some really nice setups um, with the Aqua Sky. You're just not going to, depending on your setup, uh, I don't know how tall your tank is. Um, but if it's like a longer, uh, uh, shorter tank that you're popping this on, uh, you can probably still do some decently high light stuff, mid to mid high. Uh, lighting wise uh, no it's not it's not a bad light for plants at all um, I've I've still recommended it to um, uh, people who want a planted aquarium um, that didn't want to uh, didn't want to spring for the plant it's you just got to watch your plant selection with it it's not as can uh, doesn't have uh, as much versatility or power um, but um, but yeah you can still do some good stuff with it for sure um, <laughs> uh, Audrey says, uh, because I keep my lights on too long, he says, answer, because I keep my lights on too long and overfeed my fish. Yes, that's why, uh, that's why we get algae. <laughs> that is the main causes, um, of, of getting that algae is overfeeding your fish, keeping those lights on too long. So stop it. If you, if you stop doing these things, you don't need the algae eaters, but, as y'all keep pointing out, algae eaters are cool, so, you know, I just, uh, 
I just want people to get over the thinking that they are a necessity because they are not. You don't have to do that in your tank. And I get so many people that come through into the shop uh, thinking that it is a must have. Um, the, the, I think the two things that people uh, assume that they need in their aquarium um, that they don't are uh, algae eaters and bubblers. Uh, people are always like, all right, I need the bubbler next, right? Um, and I'm always like, well, I mean, if you want to, yeah, it looks cool, but <laughs> uh, no, you don't need it. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the two things that people are always uh, trying to get uh, that they think that they need, um, but they don't need. But if you want them, they're awesome. Uh, and again, I'm going to get into some of these uh, algae eaters, and we're going to talk about them in just a moment. And we, we did talk about the uh, nearites and the hill streams, and I'm going to get back to those here in just a minute. Uh, but I am going to uh, catch up on these comments. I don't think I have a ton of them left here. Um, <clears throat> uh, Nicole was talking about earlier uh, having the hydra and planaria problem, single beta. I was, uh, she said beta. Um, I was asking if she had multiples. It's a single beta. Um, so I definitely thought that chemicals is the best route for this situation. Yeah, um, I, I'm still going to agree with you and stand behind that for sure. Um, Elizabeth, uh, talking about the nearite snails and the hill stream says, those eggs drive me crazy, uh, with the nearite snails, but love, uh, love my hill streams. Absolutely. Um, and again, like personally, I don't, I, I don't care about the, the eggs. Um, it's just, if they're on the glass, I just scrape them off the, the, the dumbest part about them is when they're like laying them down in the crevices of driftwood. Um, and the, if they, if they lay enough of them, it's pretty noticeable. <laughs> and so, yeah, those can be a pain to deal with and try to scrape off if you do. Um, but, but yeah, they can, they can definitely be annoying. Uh, um, but I tend to not mind them so much. Um, all right, Hansel. Okay, so going against the grain here, what are healthy parameters uh, and light duration, um, that kind of stuff, for growing algae in a planted tank without hurting the plants or fish if it's possible? I have three Odos and a 30-gallon. Uh, so I assume you're trying to uh, accumulate the algae for the Odos to feed off of. Um, but uh, if you're looking to feed specific fish, I would just supplement with algae wafers or something, uh, some sort of like veggie based food. Um, I've even seen um, a lot of algae eaters go after like seaweed clips that you would typically feed to saltwater fish. Um, you can absolutely feed seaweed, uh, dried seaweed to your uh, freshwater fish that are vegetarians as well. Uh, they go crazy over it. I feed it silver dollars all the time and they, they tear through that like piranhas tear through, uh, just, I mean, any meat that you drop in the tank. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, um, <clears throat> if you're trying to grow it for, for something like that, uh, just supplement instead of trying to grow the algae itself or try to put the, uh, algae in a separate container because the more, if, if the algae is growing, uh, on your plants, um, it is directly blocking both the light and the nutrients. So, I mean, to grow algae, uh, I mean, we were talking about how to not, the, basically you just do the opposite. Let your tank stay a little dirtier, um, leave your light a lot on a little longer. Um, I don't know if there are necessarily ideal parameters um, for it. I mean, obviously, so if, you're, if your tank uh, gets too high in organics, it's going to drop your pH and things of that nature, making it not really uh, viable um, to kind of directly answer your question there. But, but yeah, I would just supplement if you're trying to feed something in particular because that is going to be a very tight rope to walk <laughs> trying to keep your plants alive and trying to cultivate algae for those uh, algae eaters um or <laughs> nicole says um with uh, an algae aquascape that would uh, honestly be kind of interesting doing an aquascape with algae hmm 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 
Maybe some uh, maybe some random experiment that is going to I foresee go horribly horribly wrong uh, and look really bad, but I might try it anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'm all caught up with those questions. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, we are. Uh, I was just getting through some questions. Uh, we do treat this as an open Q and A. So if you do have a questions about the aquarium keeping hobby, the reef aquarium shop, or our topic at hand, algae eaters. Go ahead and drop those in the comments, and I'm going to get back to algae eaters. So a minute ago, we talked about why we get algae, and that's an important thing to know. Instead of just throwing an algae eater at it, let's figure out where this algae is coming from uh, and try to uh, get rid of the source. Uh, because as I was saying earlier, uh, a lot of uh, problems, or one of the biggest problems uh, where we accumulate algae is overfeeding our fish and that um, it produces too much waste and we're not cleaning it as much. Um, so if that's the case and that's why you're developing this algae, throwing an algae eater in there is only going to add more waste into the tank, uh, therefore uh, producing algae quicker. Um, and yes, they're, they're eating it, but at some point um, you know, where, where does that seesaw land, <laughs> um, as far as, uh, waste output to algae consumption. Um, so, uh, you want to be smart about the algae eaters you put in there, uh, and you want to make sure that you're not just tossing it at algae and not going after any of the other sources of the problem. Um, so let it, let us talk about, let us talk about algae eaters. One of the first ones I want to talk about, uh, is my favorite, the autosynclus. Um, autosynclus are fantastic. They stay nice and small. Uh, they can get into smaller crevices, uh, than like plecos or things of that nature can. And I'm going to talk about plecos here in a little bit. Um, but, uh, autosynclus are a super cool catfish. Uh, they can get every surface they stay small so they can get into crevices and they hit up a lot of different types of algae um, that and the nearite snails are probably my two personal favorite algae eaters because of their versatility uh, and their voracity um, so honestly for both i recommend about one or two per five gallons um, one or two per ten gallons would probably do um, especially if you're trying to get a variety of algae eaters in there. Because um, that's what I'm about to talk about. The autosynclus and the nearites are the most versatile in the types of algae they hit up. Um, but not every algae eater is going to be as versatile as them, for sure. Um, the next one I do want to talk about um, is a mono shrimp. Uh, now, a mono shrimp are uh, probably my favorite algae eaters uh, for hair algae specifically. A monos and Florida flagfish for hair algaes. Um, so, uh, depending on the size of your tank um, and also the inhabitants of your tank, uh, a monos can be a, a really good hair algae eater. Um, they, uh, I would probably uh, stick about two or three per 10 gallons um, into a tank. So if we're getting into bigger tanks um, and you're looking at an army of them, that can get a little pricey, but they are so active and they are very, very fun to watch and they look really cool. <laughs> um, if you didn't want to go with an army of a mono shrimp and are still having some hair algae issues, those Florida flagfish are super cool. They're very colorful. Um, in even in like a you can put them in something as small as a 20 gallon um but i do caution you that if you're going to do that um that they are going to take up some room in there they're going to get about two two and a half inches um or so um so they would be more of a like a, a centerpiece type fish maybe in a in a 20 gallon just depending on what else you have in there um, but even up to like 55 gallons, you could have a pair of them in there um, and they would take care of the hair algae pretty well. Um, that is one of their main diets um, natively. Um, I actually, one of our, um, 
one of our longtime customers, Monty, uh, and a longtime member of the Circle City Aquarium Club, um, he used to breed the heck out of these things, um, and he was our primary source for getting um, these Florida flagfish uh, into the shop. They were locally bred. Um, his, his colony has since dwindled, um, and we uh, order them elsewhere now. But when he was bringing them in, he told me he was cultivating hair algae in a tub on his porch just to take the hair algae out, toss it in the tank, uh, and let them mow it down. Um, and that was how, uh, that was his secret to getting them to breed like crazy, uh, because they were getting their preferred food source, which was hair algae. Um, so, got some hair algae, pop some Florida flagfish in there, um, and they are great at that. Um, so, um, I do want to, we did touch up on, uh, uh Cyano a little bit, but I want to go back to Cyano. We were talking about Nerites, um, uh, hitting up Cyano, but we've talked about those snails enough. Um, I want to touch back on the Hillstream loaches again. These guys are fantastic. Um, Outside of an actual stingray, they're about as close to, like, something that's going to be stingray-looking um, that's going to stay nice and tiny uh, in a small tank that you can get. Uh, so, And there's uh, several different varieties of them out there, and some are a little more effective than others. I typically go with your uh, the more popular one, which is the reticulated hillstream loach. Uh, they are, like, lower to the ground. Um, and their whole body, including their fins, basically creates this suction cup. Um, so we're actually, when we're catching them out of the aquarium, it is uh, quite difficult, and we'll typically have to use something other than just a net uh, to get them up in there, because um, they'll even just crawl right up onto the uh, glass, like above the water line, and just be sticking on the glass, because they're just a little suction cup. They're super cool, very active. They do like flow. Um, so if you're going with some hill streams, uh, try to keep that flow up. Uh, they don't like uh, a crazy warm water, so I typically try not to take them past like 76, uh, like like 82 at the max, um, and some people will probably yell at me for that, but <laughs> um, when I'm uh, when I'm keeping them in their preferred habitat, they're actually sitting in like the uh, the low 70s uh, as far as their temperature goes, because they're coming out of some, some cool water streams uh, out of the wild, so... Um, but they are super fun to keep, really great at cyano. Um, uh, large, smooth stones, they will clear off real quick. Um, and again, they hit up the glass too for cyano. Uh, so nearites uh, and both the, uh, both nearites and hillstream loaches are fantastic at cyano. Um, I do want to uh, talk about a couple other things, but those... Um, Five uh, fish that I've mentioned are probably my favorites in general, but um, other really good ones are the Siamese algae eater. Um, uh, those were kind of made uh, uh, popular maybe about a decade. They've been around for a long time, but people really started getting into them about a decade ago when, um, when Omano started using them a lot. Um, they do get a little heftier, um, so they are going to be uh, something for a relatively larger tank. Um, you can start them off like in like a 20-gallon or something like that, but they're not going to stay in there. Uh, you want like maybe at least a, a 40 or 50-gallon uh, eventually for them as they get larger and, and uh, a little more active. Um, yeah. They just need a bigger tank. But they're really good at eating algae. They're another one that's uh, uh, great at hair algae, if you've got a hair algae issue. Um, good generalists. Uh, cherry shrimp are also uh, really good at just kind of keeping algae down. The Amano shrimp specifically are, like, voracious when it comes to algae. But cherry shrimp or uh, just neocardinias in general, um, I say that because they're really, uh, they're probably the easiest shrimp to keep. Um, but shrimp colonies really help to keep uh, algae levels down. Um, like I said, not as effective as the Amanos, uh, but still really good at doing it. 
Um, also, just they're they're great scavengers and cleaners in general. If you've ever kept shrimp um, and uh, <laughs> and had a significant amount of them, you know that if you drop a, a wafer or a, a larger piece of food hits the bottom, you're gonna have a shrimp pile in about five ten seconds. <laughs> um, and so yeah, they're they're great cleaners in general. Um, <clears throat> So those have been my um, my favorite uh, algae eaters and typically the ones that I recommend the most. Um, you might notice something missing off of uh, this discussion so far, um, and there's honestly a reason for that. So uh, before we talk about what's missing off this list, um, let me jump into the comments again and see what y'all been talking about and see if you've even asked me any questions or if you're just talking to each other. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just going to skip those if you've added someone else and assume that there's not a question in there for me. <laughs> um, let's see here. Chase asking, would you consider a hypencystrus species an algae eater? I don't think my L129s ever come close to algae. Um, and you are, Chase, you are, you're jumping the gun on my whole conversation from the very beginning, man. And that's great. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yes, I have, uh, I have left, uh, all plecos. Uh, there's uh, there is not a single pleco on my favorites list anyway of algae eaters. Um, now, um, and, and I'm going to get in that for a, in just a minute, Chase. Uh, let me jump into um, jump into these comments here. Uh, Benjamin asking what the best algae eaters for uh, a 50 gallon salt water is. So uh, absolutely, we have not hit up salt water at all yet. Um, and honestly, the, uh, the algae eaters are pretty straightforward in salt water as well. Um, I mean, I guess they're not so straightforward in freshwater. Um, but if you're looking for good, effective algae eaters, um, lawnmower blennies are fantastic for hair algaes. Um, tangs are fantastic for algaes in general. Um, and specifically like your, uh, um, and, and I'm not a saltwater expert here, so uh, a, attempt to uh, take my layman's terms, your round-bodied uh, tangs. Um, those I've found personally, at least in the shop, are a little more effective at grabbing algaes than your longer bodies, like, uh, like a hippo tang um, is a longer body, a, a yellow tang would be a round body. Um, and that's just my, that's, that's, that's me spouting off, uh, Dave terms here. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and that's just my, uh, personal experience, um, and, and what I've noticed, but those are great generalists fish wise. And, uh, probably what I would go with if you're looking for a fish specifically, but better yet um, is just a variety of snails, crabs, and shrimp. Um, those are going to be your best cleaner crews in general. Maybe not um, saltwater shrimp um, specifically uh, are typically more carnivorous. Um, and uh, your freshwater shrimp go after a lot more algaes uh, than, they, uh, than the saltwater shrimp do. Um, like if you're looking up species profiles for uh, saltwater shrimp, you'll actually notice that most of them are listed as carnivores, uh, which when I figured that out, I found super interesting because I'd been dealing with freshwater mostly. Um, but yeah, get you a variety um, because each of these things, um, and snails specifically, are going to be one of your better ones. A lot of your crabs, uh, especially if you're keeping corals, can be pretty damaging um, in the long run. Um, hermit crabs, you know, you're getting them as babies, but uh, they, they'll they'll get sizable. I mean, you're getting them dime-sized uh, or smaller um, when they start, um, but hermit crabs can can get chonk and get pretty disruptive, grab some fish, knock corals over and stuff. Um, so uh, beware there. I really still like them as a, uh, as a cleaner. Uh, you just, you just got to watch it. Um, other great algae eaters, so uh, like I said, the snails, uh, if you jump into a variety of those, grab some turbos, um, some astrias, um, some nasarius, which are going to uh, dig through your substrate, and that's going to help keep your substrate turned to help keep cyano clear. 
Um, and there's a lot of other substrate turners as well, like jawfish uh, and things like that for cyano that accumulates on the sand bed. Um, those aren't actual algae eaters and they're not gonna take care of anything else. Um, but uh, going back to snails, um, uh, trochus snails are awesome at um, just algae. <laughs> um, so uh, variety is going to be key for you in, in saltwater and in getting your cleaner crew base. Um, and there's some uh, tanks and situations like if you're trying to keep a puffer um, and vertebrates are not great and that's where you're going to turn uh, more to like tangs and, and uh, lawnmower blennies and things of that nature. Um, but again, we're dealing with a 50 gallon tank so uh, I tangs aren't really going to be that viable for you in the long run. You could start a really small one, but lately tangs don't come in like smaller than, than this right now. It's at least your round bodied ones. Um, they've been coming in pretty big um, and something that I would like m keep them in a minimum of like 40 to 50 gallons at the point they come in at and they're still going to grow. So um, I hope that uh, helped you out there, Benjamin. Um, those are going to be your best saltwater algae eaters. <laughs> and I love that y'all are talking to each other down here. I, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm catching bits of this. I'm not reading this whole conversation, but this whole, if y'all are reading this, uh, this uh, little conversation about tannins and almond leaves and things like that, I, I, I approve and I dig what's going on there. <laughs> and, and again, if you're just joining us, we treat uh, this as an open Q&A. Drop those questions in the comments about aquarium keeping, um, about the reef aquarium shop, about algae eaters. That is what we're talking about today. Uh, we've talked so far about the, uh, the source of our algae uh, and I am, I, speaking of talking, I've talked a long time. So I'm going to take, <laughs> take a, a beverage break real quick. So we've talked about the source of algae um, and to not just throw an algae eater at algae, figure out where your algae is coming from and then make the decision. We've also talked about the fact that you do not need an algae eater, but algae eaters are super cool. So why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, and then uh, we've also gone over uh, our favorites for now, both freshwater and saltwater algae eaters. We talked about the autosynclus, nearite snails, a mono shrimp, uh, hillstream loaches, Florida flagfish, uh, we've even gone over cherry shrimp, uh, some Siamese algae eater action, and, uh, and what I want to get into now, which is uh, what Chase was bringing up. Um, and I don't know, um, where did that go? Uh, yes, so we're talking about uh, uh, Pleco species. He was talking about the Hypancistris. Um, Honestly, uh, plecos outside of a couple species, which I'm about to name drop, um, are not great algae eaters. They're really not. Like uh, most of them are going to focus on more on like uh, meats and uh, non on wood and and things of that nature. Uh, your best algae eating plecos, and not to say that the the other species won't. Um, eat algae, but they're, uh, as far as speaking to their effectiveness, um, plecos aren't effective. Uh, bristlenose plecos, those are effective. Um, and the great thing about bristlenose is there's a bunch of different varieties out there. Um, the problem with bristlenose is that they do, um, add, uh, compared to the rest of the fish we've been talking about, get a little larger. They're going to, depending on male or female, get around like uh, four to six inches. Um, and so they can, they can take care of your glass, they can take care of larger pieces of rocks and wood, but they're not really going to be able to take care of crevices, plants, um, like uh, your autosynclus and nearite snails are really good for, uh, and a mono shrimp are great for planted tanks because they're going to get that algae off the plants. Uh, bristle nose, not so much, which is just why they didn't make my favorites. Are they good algae eaters? Absolutely. Uh, bristle nose plecos are great algae eaters. And uh, like, like I was talking about, we can get, uh, you can find them in a variety of different sizes or uh, uh, styles. Like right now, um, you know, your most commons are the, the standard uh, brown kind of white spotted ones and the albino of the same. 
um, but we just got in and I don't know if we still have any left and in fact I can find out but uh, we did recently get some blue eye lemon bristle nose in which have a very noticeable set of like baby blue eyes um, and um, in a more yellow, oh, if I could spell, that'd be great. Uh, in a more yellow base than like an albino base, uh, which is super neat. Um, inventory says we still have a couple in stock, uh, but they may be really good at. Once we get down to like one or two of these, sometimes they can uh, they can disappear in our system. So we will, uh, if we can get those uh, in again, we will definitely will. But because those are always very popular, the blue eye lemons, and they were. Uh, a good price. They were only fourteen ninety nine when they were in here. So, I, I, like I said, uh, we still uh, supposedly have three in stock. I don't want to uh, to marry you to that number because they could uh, that that varies from time to time. Always, if you're going into the store, which isn't open right now, <laughs> um, and I'm still am I? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we are open normal hours tomorrow. I do have confirmation. So, um, yes, we are open tomorrow for those of you who are wondering. Still closed currently. Um, but, uh, and, uh, at 7 o'clock now. We would be closing at 8 o'clock anyway. We will continue to be closed for the rest of the day. <laughs> but, uh, uh, what was I talking about? I got off on a, uh, tangent. Yes, uh, Bristle Nose. We've got some cool stuff in. Uh, more fish coming in later. Um, but, yeah, Plecos, in general, are not the best. Bristle nose, um, which we just talked about, are really good. And uh, rubber lips. I found rubber lips to be uh, pretty effective as well. And, like I said, not to say that a couple more species out there are not going to be good. Um, people, uh, the people will usually, you know, obviously ask about the common Plecos. is the most common, hence the name, common Pleco. Um, but common plecos are awful. Yeah, when they're this big, they're going to clear your tank of algae uh, pretty quick. Uh, but when they are this big, uh, they are not eating algae and they are just pumping poop into your tank. <laughs> they are poop pumpers. Don't make that the new catchphrase. Let's stick with Bob Moss. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the common plecos and especially like your wood eaters, like, uh, uh, oh man, royal plecos are the worst at creating waste in your tank. They will just chomp on your wood and make literal piles daily um, of, of waste. So um, like we were talking about earlier, um, where does that where does that seesaw land? They're not even eating uh, algae. They're mostly they're mostly like frozen foods, uh, regular fish food, and wood based uh, for those royals. Um, so so yeah, plecos in general are not the best. Some other things that aren't the best um, are uh, are mystery snails. Let's let's talk about mystery snails for a minute. I, I love mystery snails. Uh, if you were uh, watching on the stream where I talked about how I got into the hobby, um, I got into the, I stayed in the hobby because of a mystery snail. Um, it was it was just the coolest thing. They get you know they they get a good size and they're really personable. You can actually train them to come up to the top of the tank to get fed. Just a really neat snail. But as far as an algae eater goes, yes, they're decent at it. Um, but they are so good at it that they will, uh, once they get through your algae, they're going to start chomping on your plants, especially, especially like little tiny leaf plants, like ground cover, forget about it. Uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll just, uh, gnaw those leaves off right to the stem. Um, so you've got to really be careful that, and they can breed like, whoa, um, like you can get so many mystery snails in your tank. Um, a way to combat that, uh, because we actually kept some mysteries in our main 315 gallon display. We've since removed them, but they didn't breed in there because, um, we kept the water level right at the surface, um, and they had no room to lay their egg sac outside of the water, which is what they prefer to do. 
Um, so if you keep your water level up nice and high and remember to top off, uh, mystery snails shouldn't breed that much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they are, uh, they are like rabbits, those ones. <laughs> so they might not be the best option. So those are things, uh, honestly, uh, to avoid. Uh, plecos that aren't bristlenose or rubber lips, uh, avoid them as algae eaters, specifically as algae eaters. This is, this whole conversation, um, if I'm telling you to avoid something at this point, it's because of, uh, it's, uh, because it's not a great algae eater doesn't mean they're not a good fish to keep, uh, just means they're not going to be good for your algae, uh, which is what we're talking about today. Um, so, uh, things about, uh, let's, let's talk about a few more details here, because I, uh, I told Elizabeth I was going to talk about her point, which I, I still am, um, but things that you can do to uh, prevent algae, um, and, and we did talk about this a little bit in the beginning, um, keeping your water clean, um, making sure you, uh, if you, if you're not just going to do it yourself, uh, keeping your lighting down to six to eight hours a day, put a timer on the thing. The timer is going to be one of your best friends, especially if you're trying to cut that off in, uh, for the 30 minutes in between the, uh, uh cycle hours. Uh, timers are key. They are awesome. You just never touch it again. Easy as that. Um, also, uh, Elizabeth brought up the, uh, the light deco and substrate, uh, issue. Yes, that, uh, that can be a problem. Lighter substrates, uh, colored substrates, like, uh, especially white <laughs> deco and substrate, um, not only show algae more, they create more algae, um, because, uh, the light, uh, is going to hit that uh, lighter surface and reflect back uh, up and intensify your lighting in there. So you get a lot more light and a lot more algae accumulation uh, in general. So uh, having a very bright substrate or bright deco uh, can definitely lend itself more towards algaes. Um, and, it, you know, nothing wrong with doing that. Just know that you are either going to have to uh, keep your light reduced, um, make sure you're keeping on top of your maintenance, uh, or you have all, uh, just a myriad of things, uh, not a myriad, but just a decent amount of um, uh, organisms like we've been talking about, the fish, snail, shrimp, uh, that are going to take care of a variety of these algaes for you. Um, yeah, or all three. All three is great. All three is the best, and and honestly, just do, to to get your your best algae coverage, um, uh, not necessarily. I'm trying to think if all of these, most of these, most of these fish that we've talked about can go together. Um, so getting a variety of these things is also going to be key, and I kind of preach that with just about anything in the aquarium hobby. Um, you know, the the diet that you're feeding to your fish, variety is key. Um, and yeah, variety is key. Uh, also people have, uh, have sometimes have issues with, uh, phosphate, uh, coming out of their tap water here locally. Um, and, uh, uh, there's, there's some things that you can stick into your aquarium, like carbons that can leach out phosphates into your aquarium. Um, so, uh, that is definitely something to test for if you're having a, uh, if you're having an algae bloom, specifically a hair algae bloom, test your tank for phosphates and see if you got anything coming up and then try to attack that issue, uh, cause that can definitely be a problem as well. Um... That's my algae spiel. That's my spiel about algae eaters. So we're going to jump into the comments. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, we do treat this as an open Q&A, so feel free to drop your questions in the comments below. Um, like I said, that is my spiel on algae eaters. So if I don't get very many comments, uh, you know, you're, we're, not, uh, we're not talking here. We're going to wrap this up. But I will be here all night if you want me to. <laughs> uh, talking about fish. So as long as you have questions... I will continue to answer them. Uh, I am going to move my mic because I have a different screen set up today. Sorry if this is loud for you. It shouldn't be. 
Um, that way I can see your questions. Um, all right, where did we leave off? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Audrey says plecos are great at making algae. They sure are. Well, like I said, they they do tend to put out a decent amount of waste. Um, you know, they're they're eating the algae and feeding the algae at the same time, and we hope that they can keep up with the algae um, that they are feeding. <laughs> Uh, see Nasty, uh, talking about a fish that he recently, uh, purchased from us. I'm loving my gold dojo. I got a week or so ago. He's huge. He was really big. Uh, yeah, you should, uh, um, if you're on Instagram or something, you should post a, a video or photo, uh, and uh, tag us in that. We'll, uh, once I see that, I'll share it to the main page. Um, I, I, after I'm done here, I'm, I'm going home. It's cold outside and I want to go home, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you, if you share that and tag us in it, I'll, I'll share it to our stories on Instagram and Facebook so people can check it out. It's, it's a, it's a big old noodle <laughs> and probably quite active. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes, and you picked up a see nasty saying that talking about his red bellies too. Uh, we have not been able to get uh, piranhas in general for quite a while uh, without having them be ridiculously priced. Um, but finally, uh, nine ninety nine, uh, like dime sized, but we have them in their nine ninety nine. <laughs> so, uh, so come in and grab those. We still have a few left. I don't think see nasty uh, cleaned us out. I don't think he did. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. What else we got down in the comments here? Chase says, I got a long fin, blue-eyed lemon from you guys about a year ago. Great-looking fish. I paid much more than $14.99 for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, those long fins, um, they tend to drive that price up a little bit. Um, and that's with any of those... Uh, bristle nose variants uh you, you toss a long fin on them um and they're automatically just going to go up in price uh unfortunately but uh but yeah let's see here oh chase is also saying that he has a long fin super red um like yeah long but super reds are super cool they are a red pleco um and some of them tend to be a little more orangey but i've seen some like very red variants um so yeah um those are also very cool <laughs> audrey talking about her royal pleco being very messy love hate relationship absolutely they are such a cool pleco but make such a big mess um I have uh, I have both kept and loved royals, and I have both and I have uh, left a royal in the shop tank um, after wanting it, be for the very same reason. Well, not for the very same reasons, but for those reasons. Um, once I kept it, I, when I kept it, I loved it. I had it. I knew it was going to create a bunch of waste, and I didn't care. And I kept the tank nice and clean. Um, and uh, I uh, moved tanks, and, and that whole setup went to a friend. Um, when I moved out here, um, but, uh, but I had the opportunity to get another one, and, uh, as much as I loved it, I didn't want to deal with the mess again, so, yeah, I love that fish, but I, I think at this point, um, I think at this point, if I were to, I don't have a, a tank that's kind of, that's really geared for a Royal Pleco right now, but I, I think if I had a tank at this point for a Royal, I'd get it again, but, you know, like like I said, they are uh, they're definitely they're definitely love hate and uh, they create a mess. But they're really cool, really beautiful fish. We get sizable too. Um, t -t 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 see if I've got any more questions in here, and if I don't, I am going to start wrapping this up. Uh, but I do have a question for Audrey. I can, uh, I can finally can say that I have plants thriving, uh, and I have some jungle valves stretching across the back of the tank. How often should I be putting in root tabs, uh, and how often should I do flourish doses? Um, so in general, you can be doing the tabs like every, I'm tossing them in there every two or three months, um, if you're if you've got some larger plants, you can be doing it more frequently or putting them in uh, in a higher quantity. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not like I'm not packing them in there or anything. And I know some people who like do it like uh, a, two three times a year, um, putting new root tabs in, um, and they're still pretty successful. But yeah, if you can. If you can hit that once, uh, once a month, once every other month, um, once a month maybe a little much. It depends on how much they're absorbing. Uh, a lot of that can be dependent on the the number of plants you have going on in there for sure. Um, and as far as the uh, flourish doses, and this goes for any liquid dosing really. Um, uh, it depends. <laughs> Uh, it depends on your on your plants and their in their consumption. If you've got a bunch of stem plants, be dope. toss that in there uh, two three times a week. Um, if you've just got if you're sparse uh, or if you're filled and it's just a bunch of anubias and, and like vowels and or jungle vowels and things of that nature, popping it in there uh, once maybe twice a week is perfectly fine for it and and gonna do that for it or and gonna um, get them dosed well enough for you. Um, a lot of times it's just going to be testing your tank and, uh, uh, if you've, uh, if you're noticing your organics are high, maybe cut back on your dosing and, and the flourish isn't necessarily going to do that. There's, there's going to be a lot of supplements that you can put in there for, for plants in general. Um, but I always, uh, I always just watch my, my general water parameters. Uh, and if I notice anything off, I'm usually pulling back on those a bit. Um, but yeah, doing doing that uh, once or twice a week on your general like kind of all inclusive plant supplements like that uh, is typically where you want to land with that. Um, some are going to be different. Um, it, I I'm reluctant to say follow the instructions on the bottle because typically the instructions on the bottle are for a fully planted tank. Uh, and like I said, if you're sparsely planted or don't have like a ton of stem plants. Uh, you can definitely be doing less than, than recommended dosing. Um, but in general, if you're sticking to the recommended dose, you should be fine with a, uh, a decently planted tank. Good question. Chase asking, would a good algae eater eat Christmas and Java Moss too? Not a good one, no. <laughs> um, and, and like I said, most of the, uh, most of the ones we talked about that are uh, in our favorites here um, are going to leave moss uh, and things like that alone. Uh, the ones that are most going to leave it alone would be your shrimp species, like your amanos, uh, cherry shrimp, uh, things of that nature. Those are going to be fine with moss. Um, maybe the ones I would be worried about it with would um, be, I don't know, maybe the, the Florida flagfish, maybe? Um, but... But no, a good algae eater is not going to eat your moss. Um, and I, I don't think any of the ones I mentioned are, should really go after that at all. No, uh, they should just be going after that algae. Um, fam G jumping in saying hello. Welcome, fam. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> see, Nasty say, uh, says he's going to try to clean us out of those red bellies. He has a 120 getting ready for him. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Good looking honky says, I need a better vacuum, 95 gallon. Any suggestions? Yeah, the Python. The Python uh, water changing system is all you really need for anything. If you have anything over like a, a, a 30 gallon, or if you're keeping uh, multiple tanks over 10 gallons, uh, as far as, like, if you're keeping, like, if you have more than 50 gallons of water uh, between multiple tanks, or if you have a 30 gallon single tank or larger, get a, get a python. Um, they, depending on how long of a hose you need, they are, uh, they can be just a little spendy, but, uh, worth every penny. I held off for the longest time on grabbing a Python water changer, and once I did, uh, and it was the price point, I was like, I don't think I need to spend that much on, on this. I, I mean, it looks great. looks like it's going to save my back a little bit, but, um, and the, the water changer system, it basically just hooks up to your sink, uh, if you're unfamiliar. Um, and you can both drain and fill your tank right from your sink. Uh, never have to fill uh, a bucket again. 
um, and that is just the best. Um, so yeah, grab one of those. Uh, outside of outside of that, uh, anything else is going to fail in comparison. I do Python products does put out, especially for your size of a tank. If you're talking about uh, a 95 gallon, um, yeah. Anything else is going to fail. The uh, in comparison to doing an automatic water changer like the uh, not an automatic, but uh, like the Python systems. So there are some standard ones out there uh, uh, that are just your regular hoses uh, where you're just going to siphon it out into a bucket that have the larger extensions. Um, uh, and like I said, that's going to be uh, I think Python specifically has a longer extensions that you can do, but yeah. Just get the uh, just get the Python, uh, and if you end up not watching this live, I'm gonna toss a link to our review up there. But if you go into our reviews, uh, or our product review playlist, we have one up there um, for the Pythons. It's worth a look. Go check it out. Um, what else we got? Fam says, "Do I need another snail? I don't know, man. Do ya? Uh, how many you got, and how big's that tank?" I recommend it and uh, okay so I guess I'll just go with this in general whether you're doing um, nearites uh, or the mysteries um, one or two per 10 gallons is probably a, go a good rule of thumb um, as far as getting them to do a job of algae cleaning um, yeah yeah that's that's how many snails you need so do you need another snail uh, <laughs> good looking says my vac only pushes like one psi. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a personal problem. Uh, it sounds like uh, a plumbing problem. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta hook it up to something that's going to get you enough pressure to actually start pulling it from your tank. Um, it, if it's a, if it's a problem with the pressure, it's not a problem with the vacuum. Uh, it's just a problem with your water pressure. Uh, you gotta, you gotta bump that up to, uh, get more pool off of that. But I have really found that, uh, even if I were in a situation where I'm not getting that much water and my hose is really long going from my tank to my sink, if I can start the siphon manually, uh, and get it running into the sink, um, or uh, get it running. You can even drop it down lower because if if you're if you're having problems getting the siphon started, um, you got your your hose in your tank over here, right? Uh, and you're coming down uh, into your sink over here, right? Let's move this over. Um, you have that loop where you're going. So if you're if you're up in your sink and you're not getting the the, the proper psi that you need. Um, drop the the other end um, and have it drain into like your bathtub, your shower, uh, even your toilet. You can just uh, clean it first or something, whatever. I don't know, uh, but just close the lid over it and it'll hold it right there. Uh, and that is going to at least uh, get a gravity drain f going for you. Um, and if you can get that gravity drain going up into the sink, um, tossing it on there and getting it going uh, typically gets me uh, a little more pressure going. Uh, it's very situational, so that advice might not even work or might not even be relevant to you. But <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to help you out, man. Um, but yeah, work on getting work on getting better pressure. You can gravity drain with the siphons, um, and if the hose is long enough, run it out a window, run it out your front door. Um, and gravity drain out of it, uh, and then you just have to worry about filling. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, with pressure being your issue, uh, I don't I don't think the a new vacuum is going to help anything outside of maybe cutting off any excess line that you have. Um. Chase asks, is there a secret to getting my Columbia Zebra L129s out of the caves? If I didn't know where they hide, I'd never seen them. Yeah, turn your lights off. <laughs> as soon as you turn your lights off so you can't see them, they're going to come out so that you can't see them. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're just going to be secretive, man. Uh, best I can tell you is to grab a flashlight 
Um, try to feed them specifically, like if you're dropping uh, the, uh, the the wafers down, like algae wafers or wood chip wafers, um, try to do that in like uh, the dusk times of day. Um, they tend to be a little more active then, um, uh, outside of uh, when your lights are out. Um, if you have adjustable LED lighting, dim those lights down when you're feeding them, um, or just pop on the blues, and if you can see them there. Uh, outside of that, it's flashlighting them in the cave. Um, that's that's my best advice. They're just they're just nocturnal, uh, and they're hiders. Uh, that's that's plecos <laughs> in in general, and most catfish in general, honestly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, just try to target feed them at the uh, at the right times. Um, morning or evening is going to be ideal for that, and and dim those lights if you can. Um, fam saying uh, referring to the snails he was talking about, and if he needs another snail, five gallon and two snails. You do not need another snail. If you want another snail, get another snail. But you do not need another snail. Uh, and honestly, we, we talked about this in the beginning, fam. I don't know if you were able to join us in the beginning of the stream, but you don't need an algae eater in general. It's not a necessity. Um, but they're cool, and we love them, and they do perform a function. So as far as needing it, no, you don't need a second snail for algae uh, in a five-gallon. Um, if you want it, cool, go for it. Snails are neat. It's what got me into the hobby, or kept me in the hobby. Um, See, Nasty says, any thoughts on the Fluval Provac? Um... <laughs> he says, I don't think it's worth the $60. Um, it's the, uh, that's the, uh, the automated one, right? Or the one with the little, uh, the vacuum or the, the motor on it that you stick in there. Um, and depending on the way you use those, they, they can be worth it. Um, so the nice thing about those is that the majority of them, or at least all of them I've seen, I, I think, um, can be used in two different ways. Uh, there's the just the regular uh, sediment filter, which is essentially the same concept as the the machine. We call it the machine that we run in our uh, in the shop. Uh, if you uh, if you jump on our Instagram, scroll down a little bit, you're going to see this uh, picture of a, a just this contraption that has four blue tubes on it. We call it the machine, and in those four tubes are uh, four uh, high density polishers. Um, so it works the same way. Um, we're just doing it on a larger scale um, and a little more effective scale than that. But uh, all you're doing is just circulating the water um, through the polishers right back into the tank. So you're just taking physical material out. You're not actually you're not actually doing anything. You're not actually doing anything for your fish. You're doing it for you. Um, you're 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 sweeping um, stuff under the rug instead of getting it out of the house. <laughs> um, but the most of them can be attached to uh, a hose and you can use that motor to kick your water out. Um, it's nice in a lot of situations and definitely it would be worth $60 in a lot of those situations, but I've not personally run into a scenario where I would use one of those over anything else. Um, yeah, it's nice to pop a switch and you're, and you're pumping water out of your tank, uh, especially if you're using that bucket style, because um, that, that pump's not going to be quick enough to like pump a long hose you're you're still you're still going to be dealing with buckets and stuff um so yeah that's that's the best feature about it is that you can turn on a pump um and and then you're also just cleaning up some debris uh it's not that specific uh model that i don't really find a need for it's that product in general that i don't find a need for <laughs> Um, regardless of how much it costs, if even if it's even if it were twenty dollars, I would be like, I don't really need that. I, it's it's not for me personally. They, we don't we don't have them in the shop. I don't know if you've noticed. We carried them for a while. No one bought them. Um, we didn't find uh, that they were useful for us personally. So we stopped carrying them. <laughs> um, they, like I said, situationally, I'm sure they're great, and in the right situation, I am sure they're absolutely worth the money. Um, but I just, 
there's not a lot of situations where those are going to be ideal. Just do an actual water change instead of if you're in there, if you're already in there vacuuming the tank, um, why aren't you doing a real water change? <laughs> If you're sweeping it up, that's, again, that's for you. That's not for the fish. You're sweeping it under the rug. Uh, you're, you're sweeping their their waste, like, under the rug. It's like your, your, your dog took a dump on the floor, and instead of, like, you know, throwing that away or taking it outside or whatever you do with your dog's waste, and when they go inside, they, whatever, you just shove it under the rug. You're still going to smell it. It's still going to be there. It's still dirty. <laughs> But uh, but you can't see it anymore. Uh, so yeah, I just it's it's not the it's not that particular brand uh, or or model because I, be, I believe that's the specific model we even brought into the store. I just didn't find a use for the piece of equipment in general. Um, I just don't think it's necessary. Anyway, now that I've said that uh, probably about two or three times efficiently. <laughs> I'm going to, I think I'm going to call that a day. Uh, you guys have been fantastic and jumping in here. I'm really glad this uh, new time and day seems to be working out well for you guys. Um, we will be back here next week, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, just like this week. Um, and if you want to catch our live fish room tours, uh, like us on Facebook and uh, and get our notifications there. We go live now every Friday. We, we were going live on Thursdays, but uh, our saltwater shipment days uh, were getting a little wonky there again. So we are back to Fridays. And I usually try to go up around 2 or 3 o'clock on Friday to show you all the new stuff that we got in the fish rooms. So good times. Uh, Audrey says, well, after that, all that talk about water changes, I'm thinking I'm going to go do one during my work break. There you go. Excellent. Get those water changes done, everybody. And I am going to see you here. If I don't see you on Friday on Facebook, I will see you uh, 